Hello students, welcome to the next session of the general surgery lecture discussion series and today's topic of my discussion will be mainly focusing upon the shock, particularly the cause of the hypovolemic shock and the concept of the hypovolemic shock I'll be discussing about. So students, before we should discuss the causes and the concept, just a one line definition as to what is shock. So shock in one simple statement can be defined as an acute clinical syndrome. So students, it is a syndrome, means a collection of symptoms you'll be finding. So shock, it is defined as an acute clinical syndrome characterized by hypoperfusion and decreased blood supply to an organ thereby causing severe dysfunction of the vital organs. So students, shock, it is that condition, it is an emergency medical condition where there is going to occur hypoperfusion of the vital organs, means the vital organs of the body, they are going to have lesser blood supply than in the normal routine course lesser blood supply will be there and that can even cause to severe dysfunction of the organs as well. So students, today's topic, I'll be mainly focusing upon the causes of the hypovolemic shock. So on in general, when we classify shocks, so shocks can be classified into the hypovolemic shock, the cardiogenic shock, the distributive shock and the obstructive shock. So students, while looking at the causes of the hypovolemic shock, as the name itself is suggesting, hypo means less and volemic means the volume. So in this kind of a shock, what is going to happen is the amount of the blood volume is going to be decreased in the body. So hypovolemic shock is generally manifested when the body loses one fifth of its total blood circulation blood volume of the blood volume, it is the 20% or the one fifth of the blood volume is lost due to some or the other causes. So hypovolemic shock is mostly seen in those conditions where there is going to occur a uh, blood loss or in several other cases where the plasma loss is there. So it can be broadly subdivided into two broad categories, one in which severe blood loss has taken place or it can be seen in certain conditions where plasma loss has taken place. So the first cause, what I'll be focusing upon, it is the loss of the extracellular fluid. So what is going to happen is whenever there is going to be a deviation in the normal exchange pattern between the tissue fluid and the microvasculature of the capillaries, when an imbalance or a deviation is going to exist, there can occur a hypovolemic shock. So most of the places in the non-hemorrhagic causes for this hypovolemic shock, when we look upon in conditions where a person is undergoing through severe diarrhea, uncontrolled or prolonged or severe diarrhea if it is present, in, if it is going to have in certain conditions when in a non-acclimatized individual or in a non-acclimatized host, whose body's adaptability is not competent enough to cope up with the surroundings. So in, in conditions of these, in conditions where increased sweating is there in a non-acclimatized individual, again, a hypovolemic shock can be manifested. The bleeding is another very important cause. And these bleedings can be seen in very many forms. Either it can be a bleeding due to a sharp injury where rapid large amount of blood loss can be very evidently seen or in certain conditions these bleedings can be either internal as well. So in cases of minor road traffic accidents, in cases of minor, in cases of trauma, in cases of bleeding when it is going to happen, these um, hypovolemic shock can be manifested or these uh, bleeding can also be seen within the internal organs as well. So the internal bleeding, what is mostly seen, uh, it is not easily uh, clinically visible and the patients may not uh, get very, the, we, the signs and symptoms of the internal bleeding cannot be very easily made uh, make out. We can, um, the signs and symptoms of them can not be very easily 
found found out that internal bleeding is there since it is difficult to diagnose the internal bleeding sites so the third shift uh, the another cause what i'll be uh, saying is since there is deviation in the normal exchange pattern between the microvasculature of the capillaries that is from the ecf to the microvasculature of the capillaries so there is third space shift to sodium from the extracellular to the intracellular com compartments so obviously what is going to happen is the sodium what is the, uh, there what is there in the extracellular compartment it moves into the intracellular compartment due to failure of the sodium pump so what is going to happen is the body in the condition of uh, hypovolemic shock what is going to happen is the heart the normal blood volume is in a healthy individual is about 5 to 6 liters so when one one fifth or 20% of the blood loss is there the heart is unable to pump the normal routine blood the normal blood what the heart is pumping in a normal healthy individual the heart is unable to suffice the needs of the body to adequately supply the right amount of blood to the different different organs so when the organs are the vital organs of the body when they are la lacking the proper blood supply or the proper blood what is needed for their normal functioning when the heart is unable to pump blood so those organs they are going to shut down and severe dysfunction can occur so the normal exchange pattern what i am talking about it is the third space shift is are going to occur due to the failure of the sodium pumps and one more thing when the blood sub when the blood is not in the ample amount or when the blood is not present in the right amount so of the condition is obvious that hypoxia can be seen so obviously the body is in a state of hypoxia moving on so these were the uh, factors that is the hemorrhagic causes the hemorrhagic causes can be seen as the external bleeding or in the internal bleeding so the external bleeding can be easily manifested in the form of sharp trauma or sharp injuries blunt trauma due to bruising or blunt trauma which can uh, manifest in bleeding moreover in cases of ectopic pregnancies when excessive bleeding is there the fourth cause can be seen in cases of vaginal bleeding excessive vaginal bleeding and in conditions of endometriosis these are the hemorrhagic causes of the hypovolemic shock in other conditions when this apart from the hemorrhagic shock the other condition where the hypovolemic shock is going to occur it is in conditions where the loss of plasma is there so students you might be aware that during any conditions of burns in patients of burn there is excessive plasma loss from the body and if this plasma loss is not sufficed or it is not supplied from outside the blood volume is not maintained it can lead to hypovolemic shock so again the plasma loss is another cause where the hypovolemic shock can be seen so the blood loss what i am talking about due to whole blood loss during any kind of a surgery any kind of a major surgery if the bleeding is uncontrolled if the bleeding is not controlled again particularly the uh, surgeries of the abdominal region the pelvis surgery the cardio pulmonary bypass surgeries and in major abdominal surgeries if the bleeding is unable to be controlled if the bleeding is not controlled that can lead to hypovolemic shock in conditions of trauma so wherever there is kind of a trauma in a major accident or in warfare injuries in conditions of homicidal or falling suicidal injury as by a blunt uh, by a knife or a bullet in such conditions the bullet injuries or the stab injuries where the uh, outside wound is not that visible but internally the bleeding is there so these internal bleedings if they are not controlled at the right time it can lead to a very medical attention condition medically attention attentive attention condition can it can cause so and the conditions where i have already said that is in the internal bleedings where the gastrointestinal bleeding is there in conditions of peptic ulcer in conditions from the perforation of the intestines bleeding from the oesophageal varices the oesophageal varices which are mostly seen in the patients of the liver cirrhosis or in the alcoholic cirrhosis the oesophageal oesophageal varices in patients of the 
hepatitis, uh, liver diseases, these bleeding can occur and also in conditions where obstructive bleeding is present. So obstructive bleeding can be seen in conditions of incomplete abortion or in placenta previa. So students, this was a short discussion about the causes of shock. Other, I'll be talking of the symptoms. So mostly if it is a the blood loss or the plasma loss is to a minor amount, the patients may show symptoms of a lightheadedness, dizziness, confusion. So um, profuse sweating is there. So these are the little bit con uh, uh, symptoms what the patient is going to manifest. And in severe cases, there can occur uh, if the uh, hypovolemic shock is, too much, is to a much greater extent. In severe conditions, there can also lead to the fainting of the patient, cold and clammy skin can be seen the fingernails the bluishness the bluish discoloration of the fingernails can be seen so if the conditions like cold and clammy skin the bluish discoloration of the nails the pallor of the arm, arms and legs so this kind of a pallor when it is seen this is mostly referred to as the in conditions of the severe hypovolemic shock whereas in the cases of a minor hypovolemic shock what do we find is that there can be lightheadedness there can be dizziness there can give there can be this lightheadedness and dizziness it can also lead to confusion it can lead to a fainting like condition there can be profuse sweating so these are the symptoms what are mostly seen and such conditions of hypovolemic shock need immediate medical intervention and the blood volume needs to be restored so students this was a short discussion about the one line definition for shock, the types and the causes of the hypovolemic shock. Students, if you do have any queries or comments, and if you do like this video, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any queries or any topics what you want that, I, that should be discussed by me, you are most welcome to comment me in the comment section. Thank you for watching.